Uh, I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. I'm Mally Moore. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. <sighs> Season one finale. This is it, man. You Fuck. don't sound too enthusiastic. Dude, oh, yeah. Fair warning. I have a massive migraine, so. This is the movie you want a Kill migraine me. for. The fuck it is. <laughs> uh, our goal for this podcast is to try and take movies that have downer, fucked up, or sad endings like today's episode for sure. Yeah. And find a glimmer of hope for our characters at the end. Uh, doesn't get much downer than straight up death. No, this is a big one. Yep. Like, no holds barred. Yeah, I think this is a great pick too for our first season's finale because it's a, a culmination of all the different types of movies I think we've done. And up to dude, this point just so much shit like i didn't like I'll, I'll be i'll be honest i'm not a huge fan of this movie really yeah i mean i think it's just it's one of those movies that like it's so overhyped by everyone well that's mostly because of the hip-hop culture but exactly. we, we still haven't and, said what the movie is yet either oh <laughs> hey guys it's scarface yep go on anyway <laughs> duh um so yeah, I don't know. Like it's it's a great movie. I just you know I don't think it's like a perfect movie. Like so many people say it is. Well, um, expand on that. When was the first time you saw this movie? I mean, I was pretty young. I think. Yeah, no, I was little, probably like ten or so. Yeah, it's like still too young for this. I think. Yeah, that's my history with all like movies. I saw, like, dude, I saw Citizen Kane when I was like eight. Damn, I and just did saw not that understand recently. what the hell was going on. I just saw it recently for the first Re- time. Why do you see things so? <laughs> I, there's, I go down a list, live man. Under a rock. Yeah. Um. But the, yeah, that's. I think I saw this one first too, when I was in my late teens, like around seventeen, eighteen. Um. And just, I, I was rewatching it today, and that runtime is crazy, like three hours, and I can't believe it yeah. kept my attention. And dude, just so much shit happens in this movie. And despite that runtime, it still is a like fun watch. Like I still have fun watching this movie. And like I f- like everyone knows like the final scene, like mm-hmm. you know the fucking grenade launcher. But like I found myself just like not remembering anything else that happened in this movie. Really? See, I started. Like, like, I didn't like, remember the first like two hours and twenty minutes. I think the last I, I watched this movie again not too long ago, a couple months ago, and I just remember watching it and like not piecing together everything. I guess just out of like that's the kind of the the price you pay for watching movies at home is you get easily distracted. But this time I was watching in super detail and I noticed some things I never noticed before. And we'll get into it because I had, I got a lot to say about it. But uh, the reason we chose this movie for our finale because it's super relevant actually. Uh, if you have been living under a rock in the past few weeks, you uh, missed the news that there's going to be another Scarface coming out next year. Yes. Yeah. Next year. Uh, starring Diego Luna from Rogue One. And I'm fucking in. I'm so in. He's a great fucking choice. That, I will watch that dude in anything. He's great. And if that isn't any have you excited, the script is out of treatment by the Coen brothers, Terrence Winter. Fuck yes. And Jonathan Herman. So uh, wait, who's directing? Uh, no one's directed yet. It was going to be, uh, the guy from Training Day, Anthony Fuqua. Oh, okay. Oh, shit. But he's stepped out. Oh. Um, I kind of hope they... So I noticed some people pitching ideas for directors. They mentioned, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but the guy from John Wick. They mentioned uh, okay. Nicholas, Nicholas Winding Refn. Fuck yes. Oh my, oh dude, oh my God. I'd be down for that, but I also... Scarface directed by <laughs> Nicholas Winding Refn, starring Diego... Sign me up. That's a great fucking... Sign yeah. me up. I, I can't poke holes on that, but I also was kind of hoping like... I like to see, Fuck like, it, Dennis Villeneuve. Denny Villeneuve. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Give him every movie. I kind of, I'm not down with that. E- I mean, I'm not opposed to that either, but I kind of want to see Kerry Fukunaga do something else. Oh, shit. He's been, he's doing a movie now about, um. We already lost him on the It remake. Yeah, he's doing really a movie sad. about the, uh, atomic bomb going off in Fukunaga. Uh, Fukunaga. Well, <laughs> not in Fukunaga. <laughs> it's going off inside himself. I'm sorry. Not, not Hiroshima, Hiroshima, the other one. Nagasaki. Nagasaki. Fuck. Yeah. Give him this. Fucking God, give him this. Pretty much any... Actually, let him and Nicholas Winding Refn... Yeah. Oh, my God. Team them up. Uh, any of those, I'd be down for, for sure. But we're also, this movie is also, if you're unaware, this is also a remake, too. Um, yeah, for 1932. 30? Okay. Two, the, 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 book, the book came out in 1930, and then Howard Hawks did a version in uh, 1932. I don't know. It was, it was a book. 
Yeah, it was based on a sure. novel. Yeah, that came out in in 1930. But have you seen the original? No, I was gonna ask you. No, I haven't. No, me neither. Um, but I'm about to get into that actually right now because th- this Scarface from the year 1983 is directed by Brian De Palma, uh, starring of course Al Pacino, Stephen Bauer, Michael, uh, Michael, Michelle Michael, Pfeiffer, who and, I completely forgot was in this movie. Right, I completely. Uh, yeah, Michelle I Pfeiffer remember seeing this. this. Movie. Holy shit, that's Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, and Robert Loggia. But the budget for this movie was $25 million, grossed $66 million worldwide, and currently sits at an 82% certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, nice. while the 1932 version sits at a perfect 100. Fucking really? Yeah. <laughs> so I need to go back and see it. Holy shit. Uh, I was reading up today about the differences between the two, and there are some vast differences. Well, I know the original takes place in Chicago. Chicago, and he's, Chicago. An, he's an Italian immigrant. Uh, and he actually has a close relationship with his family. And there's a, there's yeah. a lot of differences for sure. Uh, this movie to me though feels very, uh, I don't want to say realistic because that's not the right word because it's so glamorized and like the hyperbole of everything. But I follow the story to be legitimate. Like, well, no, uh, well, there's that whole thing with the whenever they're trying to get it raided by the MPAA or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, they actually brought in like because it kept getting like an X rating. That was actually the only trivia note I have for this yeah, is about like, the rating. They, they brought in like po- like narcotics officers mm-hmm. who were like, no, this is what it's like. like people need to see this. Like, yeah. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, for sure. And I, I will get back into a little more clarification about that later. But first, uh, if you haven't already, let's listen to the trailer uh, to put everyone back in the mood. Because I guarantee everyone's probably seen this movie by now, right? Uh, let's listen to the trailer so you can get that straight up 80s cheese trailer uh, nostalgia going on. Okay, so what do you call yourself? Eh? Como se llama? Antonio Montana. And you? What you call yourself? Where'd you learn to speak the English, Tony? Uh, in a school. And my father, he was uh, from the United States. Yeah, just like you, you know. He was a Yankee. Uh, he used to take me a lot to the movies, you know. I learned. I watched the guys like uh, Humphrey Bogart, James Cagney. They, they teach me to talk. I like those guys. I always know one day I'm coming here, United States. 1980, Miami. They called it Little Havana, where the American dream had a price tag, and only one man in a million was hungry enough to pay. This country you got to make the money first. Then when you get the money, you get the power. Then when you get the power, then you get the woman. Scarface. For one brief moment, the world was his. Check this one. She liked me. He must be kidding. What you talking about? That's a Cadillac. How do you know? The eyes, Chico. They never lie. Man, that's the boss's lady, okay? I am the boss. That guy's soft. I like you, Tony. There is no lying in you. Here's to the land of opportunity. We've been this together a long time. I know the street. And I'm making all of my connections. Remember I told you when you started, the guys who last in this business are the guys who fly straight. With the right woman, there's no stopping me. I could go right to the top. Okay. The word on the street, Tony, is you're not a small-time punk anymore. The Supreme Court says that your privacy can be invaded. You shoot the house this month? You're spending a lot of money on this counter surveillance. We're doing 10 million, 15 million a month. Come on. Now that's serious money, you know? Your bank boys gotta come down a bit. Who else can you trust? That's why you pay us what you do. You trust us. You're in good hands with us. Al Pacino is Scarface. He loved the American dream. With a vengeance. Al Pacino, Scarface. The 
Thank God I wasn't alive in the 80s very long. I know, man. The trailers are not good Whack. back then. Uh, it's too long, first of all. This is like a three-minute trailer. Uh, and it's, you know, in that style I mean, in of his 80s. defense, that's like one minute for every hour a movie you get. Pretty much. So, fuck it. Um, it's just got odd editing choices. Like, the, just the choice of shots in general. There's, like, shots of people's feet randomly and stuff. It's just weird. Yeah. I don't um, like the cinematography in this movie that much. Yeah, it's got it's got its moments yeah. for sure. There's a lot of good moments and there's it, a lot of like, other it's, times. It's, it's just, there's nothing crazy in it. No, for yeah, me. for sure. But this trailer, I would then say again, over- I watch a lot of Nicholas Winding Rapid. Movies, yeah, so. <laughs> I'll say for this trailer specifically, overall, it's fine. It's not great. It's not terrible. It's definitely an '80s trailer. Uh, you know, when we were still trying to get into the art of having a great trailer, so it's it's fine. Okay. Uh, so right, let's get into the movie a bit now. All fair right. warning: we're not gonna go beat by beat because we would be here Forever. for fucking hours. Not even that. There's just too much to talk about in terms of plot. You know the plot: it's rags to riches with drugs yeah. thrown in there. That's pretty much it. Um, um shit. Yeah. What do you, do you have? Anything you want to talk about up front? Because I got a lot of stuff. Uh, no. Let's take the lead on this one. I gotta say, and this is probably controversial, but on this rewatch that I had today. I found Tony a lot more likable um, and a lot more reasonable than I then you know suggested when you get to the end credits. And I'll say the switch happened for me when he made the deal with Sosa. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Um, he's got an attitude. He's got a little temper, but it all feels justifiable considering what he's going that, through up, up until, until that moment point, when yeah. he gets greedy. Yeah, and um, by, by the end he's a complete fucking sociopath. But yeah, and it's just it's weird going into the movie. Taking it, like, I went in with a clean slate, wiped my memory. Like, I knew what was going to ha- happen, obviously, but I went in with it with fresh eyes. And, yeah, I just, I found him really likable. I mean, he's not necessarily the most charming person, per se, but he's, I don't know, I, I stuck with him. And I agreed with him on most of his decisions, for sure. Uh, and another thing I noticed in this movie, at, on this rewatch, is there's a lot of comedy. Like, you don't think comedy when you think Scarface. Oh, no, you this think... movie's hilarious. It's like, got just a some lot of, like, of stuff. Even stuff that isn't meant to be funny. Mm-hmm. Like, just some of the lines, mm-hmm. as classic as they are, are fucking hilarious. Just just his Al Pacino's delivery. He uh, calls someone a fucking cockroach. Yeah, cockroach. Co- yeah, sorry, cockroach. cockroach. Uh, but yeah, like, just little moments that, like, ease the tension. Like, uh, in the scene where Frank and Mel get shot and... They're uh, Manny and uh, and Tony are deciding what to do with Ernie, and <laughs> he's like, "Ernie, want a job?" And he kind of like takes a deep breath, like, "Oh, thank God!" And then that other guy's like, "Hey, man, you got a job?" And like pats him on the back. I got a genuine laugh out of it. And then the uh, the 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 of course the the choice of cutting when uh, Tony and Elvira are dancing uh, at the club, and she says, "You know, if I was desperate, starving, and begging for it, I wouldn't fuck you if you were the last man on earth." And then the next shot is. Him driving in the car with Manny saying, you know, I think that chick likes me. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah, Just that's little great. stuff like that. I, I laughed a lot more than I have before with this movie. You know what? Fuck you. How about that? <laughs> you know what capitalism is? Getting fucked. Mm-hmm. I, I love that line for some reason. <laughs> uh, I guess we should talk about this too. The score in this movie is amazing to me. Um, composed by uh, Giorgio Moroder, who's an Italian composer. I mean, how awesome is Push It to the Limit? Like, that montage song, which is... Right. Which was crafted specifically for this movie, but... Yeah, dude, all the fucking music. That song, She's on Fire, that plays like four or five different times. <laughs> I feel like that's Elvira's theme in this movie. Uh, yeah, just all the music, man. I love it. I fucking love it. Anything else you want to talk about? Because I, I, I can keep going. No, keep going. <laughs> well, actually, I got, how about this? A question that we can uh, we can discuss. Do you think this is Pacino's best role? Ooh, I don't know, dude. 88 minutes? No, <laughs> fuck that movie. Well, I, um, I think it obviously comes down to either this or Michael Corleone from I'd, Godfather, I'd right? Give it, I'm, mm, damn. I think Pacino's got more of a personality in this one and, and has yeah, has more room but... to do stuff. Whereas in The Godfather, part one at least, he's very contained and uh, he just doesn't get to play around in the scenery as much, I think. This movie is his playground. Scarface is is Al Pacino's playground yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't. Th- okay, it's Pacino at his best, mm-hmm. but it's like I mean, if we're just talking movies, I would take Godfather over this. But as far as Pacino, yeah, he definitely. I think this is his best. Him at his. Best. He found his muse in this for yeah. sure. He also says it's one of his favorite roles, but. <laughs> 
I gotta ask this too because I never even put this together, and it's so glaringly obvious. But he's Italian playing a Cuban, yeah, amongst a bunch of other Cuban actors and actresses. Uh, I mean, no, and, no one in the main cast is Cuban. Well, really. Stephen Bauer is 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 Cuban. He's about the only one. But I, like, what is his, Abraham is not. Is Gina Michelle Pfeiffer is not Gina? Well, yeah, but she's supposed I to be don't white. Think the actress that plays Gina, is she Italian? I think so. Okay. What about his mom? I can't. I, I can't don't tell. think she. There's not a lot of Cubans in this movie, which is crazy. Well, I mean, there are like the the uh, the like the low level mercenaries and things that like the other minor characters. But yeah, most of the cast is is not Cuban, which is crazy because. I mean, doing that today, you know, we have, we already have the Scarlett Johansson issue and the Matt yeah. Damon issue, but it's, I don't think anyone bats an eye because he's, he's convincing okay. as Stephen shit. Stephen Bauer is the only actual Cuban in the principal cast. Um, other cast members who play Cubans, Al Pacino, Mary Elizabeth, Mastro, That's Gina. Sonio, um, and Robert Loggia are Italian. Robert Loggia, yeah. Uh, Miriam Cullen is Puerto Rican. Okay. Um, and F. Murray Abraham is, he's Italian, um, a Syrian, Syrian, okay. Italian. Okay. Well, yeah, but, uh, um, oh, Angel Salazar, uh, plays Chi Chi, mm-hmm. Cuban American. Well, my point was just that he's so damn convincing in this that like, I don't think anyone could care. Like I bought, you buy it from minute one that he's. A fucking Cuban gangster. Yeah, no, and I, he, it's a testament he to does his really acting. Well in this. Um, which just makes me so excited to see Diego uh, Diego Luna do this. Like this, I hope this movie goes through, and it's just fucking great. I oh, hope he plays the fucking same. badass. Um, you want to talk about the director a little? I was gonna ask Brian you, De Palma. What do you think about where does this sit in Brian De Palma's filmography? I think it might be his best, dude. Mm, yeah. Yeah, he probably. certainly takes things he did in Carrie and like the Untouchables, like later on, and just like puts it all together. And it just this movie, like I said, it's got almost a three hour runtime, but you feel you don't feel it. I don't think I I I have no. fun with this movie and some of I the mean, it's no Snake Eyes, but <laughs> yeah, uh, just I think he let Al Pacino just kind of run with it and like directed everyone else around him. I feel like it's like definitely better than Femme Fatale for sure. Fuck that movie. Um. Did you know that they filmed this movie in L.A. mostly and converted I read everything that. to Little that, Miami? Good fucking job. That does not look like L.A. to me. No, especially the scene when they're at um, Manny and them are doing the drug deal yeah. with, the, with Angel and all them. Like that when they, you see the strip and you got the palm trees and the beach right there. I It's convincing as fuck that that's Miami. They don't have strips or palm trees in L.A. <laughs> Wait. I, I got to I got to tell you, too, and this is such a dumb note that i have oh, but god um and it's i can't believe i never noticed this and i'm wondering it's because maybe the the versions i saw were just i mean i i watched a blu-ray copy of this today okay i never noticed his scar on his face even the even though they blatantly show you in the interrogation scene and, and everything, they call him scare face uh, scarface there's a line mm-hmm. about eating pussy and how he got that yeah i just never noticed <laughs> it like I said, I think the poor res- and then as you watch the movie later on, it kind of disappears. I don't care how poor the resolution is; they address it. <laughs> I know. I just I, I never in the film. I never noticed it. There's a line. I'm I'm being I'm coming it. to you vulnerable here, and I'm just telling you, I never noticed it. And like I said, I think it kind of fairly dis- it for the most part, it fairly disappears throughout the movie because I remember looking for it in a lot of scenes and just not seeing it. It's not okay. a huge scar, is what I'm saying. No, it's, but it's I mean, very it's minute. Def- it's there. It's definitely there. Okay. I just thought that was funny. Whatever, man. Um, some little things I noticed in this movie while I was watching through it. Um, why do they, when they're interrogating Tony at the beginning, why do they ask him if he's a homosexual or if he's a crossdresser? Because it was the '80s. That's that's really that's I I figured that was the answer. I just didn't know if maybe there was. Well, that one. What's that one word he keeps like that? Metacon, which is Spanish for a slang for the. Yeah faggot basically yeah yeah i wasn't gonna say it yeah um which can you know there's a lot of like different kind of homoerotic and like incestual kind of themes that go here that don't really go anywhere but it definitely gives tony like makes it more three-dimensional i think for sure so on that topic do you think if this movie came out today Mm -hmm. well i I, well i mean they're remaking it do you think they're gonna tone it down um I think it depends on who's directing it and who's writing it. Well, like, 
I don't know, man. I, Terrence Winter won't shy away from it for sure. Mm. Uh, I don't know about the Coen Brothers necessarily. It depends on who's directing, I think. I, I but I mean, the whole purpose of the story is to show you the 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 power of greed and you know the desire to be in charge and everything like how it can corrupt somebody. So I don't think you can really shy away from that kind of stuff. Like especially this being set in the in the eighties, that's what the eighties were, and that's what the style was. People did sling around calling people faggots and uh you know all this other shit that's in this movie. That's what it was, and it kind of is a time capsule to take you back to that. Um. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I just thought it was an interesting little moment there, and I was just like, I I know the uh, the obvious answer is probably the the right the right one, but I was just wondering if there's maybe any underlying thing that you thought about there. But no, no. But speaking of Terrence Winter, do you know what he's also credited as the writer for Wolf of Wall Street? Get Rich or Die Trying, the Fifty Cent movie. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah, which is not a terrible movie. It's it's not Didn't great. Didn't see it. I just assumed it was bad. No, it's not great, but it's not terrible. It's no eight mile. Uh no, it's not. I dude, how great that movie all day. How great is Steven Bauer in this movie as Manny? As Manny oh dude, he's dude, so fucking good. He's like really good. It's it's almost just as much his story as it is uh Tony's, and I would love to see yeah, like and that kind of plays into later in the movie because mm-hmm. Manny gets kind of pissed that you know, he takes all the credit for how successful they've been. And I would love to see like almost like a scarface from his point from of his view. point of view like Fuck. the story of manny would be that'd be kind of interesting so cool dude maybe they do it for the remake that'd be cool if if, if uh diego luna is not playing scarface he's, playing he's actually him. manny or something that'd be fucking cool that would be great uh yeah he's just so damn he's so fucking charming in this movie and i i was like i know i know stephen bauer from something else and i it didn't piece it together until the very and you know he who what one of his most recent no. roles he's he's a uh, donny alio in breaking bad Oh shit! And I did not piece it together until I was looking at his filmography, and I was like, "That's where I fucking know I'm from." And he's great in that shit too. Oh shit! Yeah, dude, Manny is such a great fucking character in this, and especially to keep Tony, like, to basically be the the voice of the audience. That's definitely what his character's purpose is for. Um, yeah, just rewatching this, I forgot shit. how I forgot how fucking charming he was until our, this rewatch again. What else is he credited in? Oh uh, fuck it! I'm sorry. What? I'm <laughs> just asking what else he's credited uh, in. He was in Primal Fear. Oh, with uh, Edward Norton? Yeah. Well, great fucking movie for anyone that hasn't seen it, by the way. That was like Edward Norton's like first... Oscar nom? I think that that was like his I, first movie. That was movie. like one of his first fucking roles, yeah, too. Yeah. Um, Who, oh, yeah. Him and uh, fucking Richard Gere. You know, speaking about this remake, I I don't want to get you know politi- too political here, but... You always say that right before you get. <laughs> but it, I mean, it begs the question because this is the, what this movie is about on the surface. It well, from a, the story's perspective, is a, a violent Cuban immigrant comes to America and basically makes him his way up as a drug lord, right? Uh, is is this remake? Do you think they're going to play into the relevance of what's happening? in the u.s today because i'm assuming just based on diego luna's heritage that it's going to be about um a, a, a mexican gentleman uh, migrating to the u.s and i'm assuming going on so you're basing the same it path. off his heritage keep in mind a uh, al pacino played italian cuban, yeah. playing cuban um i don't know well i wonder if they said it you know back in the, the 80s. 80s and whatnot or mm-hmm. if they move it up to today like, could they modernize it would it work i don't i mean this story i mean they did in the 30s and they did in the 80s like three hour long movie of a dude climbing a big ass wall or <laughs> i mean i i your basic story is just a guy rising up as a drug lord so i mean i there's you could always do that for sure i mean they did in the 30s they did in the 80s they're gonna do it now i mean, oh, yeah, I mean there's dude like there's i would so definitely many, there's so many movies that follow this exact like, blow mm-hmm. uh american gangster mm-hmm. both great fucking movies but they literally it's they're just scarface with different people and i i gotta say i would love to see them throw it back to the 80s again that's like my favorite time period yeah. and it i mean with the fucking coke uprising then it's it would make sense to do it back then i mean that's the biggest like d- d- drug impact that we've pretty much had um so I got to speaking about Brian De Palma. I got to say some of these scenes of these larger set pieces. It just I was just amazed at how well they're directed. And speaking specifically about the riot scene near the beginning of the movie in Freedom Town oh, is shit, insane. Yeah. There's so much going on. There's people trying to climb over barbed wire fences. There's firemen spraying people with hoses. 
people that are swinging two by fours and like it's just a madhouse, dude. And could not only shit like is I don't know how they fucking just did it. controlling all of that. How many and it's a sweeping shot too on a yeah. crane, so I can't imagine how many takes they had to have done, but. From that stuff all the way down to like the minute scenes, like the very small scenes, I just think the direction is just fucking crazy good in this movie. Uh, so I do, yeah, I, for sure, I do think it's Brian De Palma's best. Um, yeah, I just, I'm, I just took notes as the movie was going on. And it was just man, just how well directed and shot this movie looks to me. Like it fits. I mean, the cinematography is again nothing home to write to write I mean, uh, it, nothing to write home about the movie, but exactly yeah. that's the, that's the reason. That, when you look at that by itself, it's nothing crazy, and that it should does. be what cinematography yeah. is. Good cinematography is just a good marriage of the direction and everything. Agreed, agreed. Uh, what do you think of Michelle Pfeiffer as Elvira? Uh, well, first off, again, forgot she was in the fucking absolutely. Movie. She just doesn't look like herself to me in this movie. No, uh, I mean she's good. She's great um, compared to the first choice. Yeah, Glenn Close. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Um, I don't know. That wouldn't have played well, I don't think. I can't picture it. Um, no, I mean, she's good. Um, she's good. She, of course. Nothing crazy. Everyone I mean, in this. She's yeah. Good. I mean, she's kind of outdone by. I was going to say, everyone in this movie is kind of outshined by Pacino. Yeah. But, I mean, she does. She has a good. Every scene she's in, she pretty much has yeah. a good command over, I think. Um, she's got that dead ass look on her face. God, man. Yeah, <laughs> she's great. Um, so, this is obviously a, a big topic about. Uh, Anyone that's seen this movie, what do you think about this whole incestual undertones Tony between Tony and Gina? Yeah, it's weird. Like he's so overprotective of her. Well, you know that apparently in the in the thirty two version, that's like a a bigger theme too. Is this whole incestual relationship between the character and his sister? Oh no shit. Yeah, and in this one, it's I I don't necessarily think it's I think Gina thinks it's incestual, whereas I think Tony's just an overprotective brother. Because he sees yeah. the he he knows what he wants and the path he's going on and he, he wants to spare her from it, but of course pushing someone away from something like that just right. draws you further in. Exactly. Um. So what do so, what do you think about it? I mean, that's I think that's pretty accurate. Like mm-hmm. he's telling her not to do something, so naturally she was like, oh, "Fuck you! I'm gonna do it anyway." Mm-hmm. Um. Like kind of same thing goes for you know him telling Manny to stay away from her, and mm-hmm. Manny's like, mm, "No." Yeah. <laughs> Uh well actually uh I got to say well let, let me talk about this first because I, I I the last note I have here is gonna take up a little while okay um what do you think of the montage in this movie the push it to the limit when they're uh, Tony's finally in charge and he's investing in all Very these things and fucking well done yeah I I put it right up there if not toppling the the Rocky montage for sure. Shit. It's oh, one of the that, ooh, It's one of the best montages. Dude. It's sir. a fucking amazing that is a song. a bold fucking statement. It's an amazing song. You get to see so much happening at once, which, you know, is a play on the South Park song, but of course. There's I don't know. It's just and this movie doesn't do many montages. There's maybe no. a, I hate like two maybe. But no, that one is I I don't know if it's better than the Rocky one, mm-hmm. but it's definitely up there. Like and I mean it's so, it sounds so weird to say cuz you never think like Oh, that montage was fucking great. Mm-hmm. Well, that's but the testament of a good montage. That can be well done. Yeah, and there are montages that are shit. This one's definitely done really fucking well. And it's a testament how good of a montage it is, like, and I it's think it's not too long. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't show you fucking. It just shows you what you need to see, basically. And it's two thirds the way through the movie, and that song picks you up. Like, yeah. you, it, I don't want to say the movie is necessarily dragging in the second act, but when it gets to that montage it you're picks starting you to feel the length there. yeah and it picks then, you back up yeah that that song kicks in you're like fucking woo let's yeah. go <laughs> last rally let's great, go great great fucking workout song too it's definitely on my my playlist when i'm exercising <laughs> um god yeah just dude the 80s i would say it would be on mine but i haven't worked out in a while <laughs> the so. 80s music is just always great like that um so this is something I know I wanted to do on this rewatch specifically because for for this podcast in particular I wanted to see it's hard to defend Tony's actions towards later on in the movie. Yeah. And it's tar- it's hard to find a silver lining when someone literally gets blasted away and shot the hell up. So what I want to do on this rewatch was specifically how does Tony's actions affect the rest of the characters in the movie? Okay. Uh and I I got to tell you uh I I started making a list of like every time someone was injured or straight up died or like their lives were inadvertently altered because of Tony. It's very, very similar to, and I mean, uh, 
you know, Vince Gilligan will be the first one to tell you. It's very similar to Walter White's path, just condensed well, to I a mean, three that's, hours. That's what Vince Gilligan said. He wanted to turn Mr. Rogers into Scarface. Yeah, so. and 100%. So, I think that's, it was, I mean, yeah. It no, was just, no wonder it reminds you of Breaking Bad. It absolutely does. And like I said, it's just something I never like was looking for. I was always watching this movie on a surface level because it's just enjoyable yeah. on like the no, I mean, action every, and like really everyone's lives are ruined worse um, or ruined because of Tony throughout the movie, which is like, yeah, in, even indirectly. So I started making a list. I want to go down the list okay. and this is every action that's directly resulted from Tony that alters one of the other characters lives. So we'll start with Manny because okay. he's the first one we're introduced to. Uh, well, first of all, first of all, the hit on Rabanga. Yeah. Uh, in Freedom Town, you know, Tony which takes out this they, guy. Which is how they get their green cards. Their green cards. cards, yeah. So, Tony does that, and they do get them their green cards and gets them a low... Even though it's a low pay, it yeah, does get them a like, legitimate job. dishwashers, aren't they? Uh, or, yeah, I think, yeah, something like I think that. Manny's like a cook and Tony's a dishwasher. Okay. Not... Obviously not great, no. right? But it is a green card, and it is and a legitimate a job. job, right? So, Manny, together with Tony, do that. That's like their only real thing that they do together yeah. throughout this movie. Yeah. Um, but of course, Tony isn't satisfied, and they lose their job by agreeing to do the Colombian deal. Yep. So all the effort Manny put into getting that job is now thrown out the window. So technically, they're unemployed, and you know they're already at risk immediately jumping into this nasty business. Um, yep. Of course, uh, uh, Tony gets shot for uh, during the the uh, deal. The, the the chainsaw incident that that gets all fucked up, and he gets another. The chainsaw thing's fucking crazy. The chainsaw scene is crazy, uh, but he got shot during that, and also you know Angel loses his life, so that's already one life lost yep. because of Tony. And Manny's been shot and lost his job. Of course, I'm gonna go ahead and jump here towards the end, but he does, of course, Tony does kill him for getting married and fucking around with Gina. Yeah. So that's two lives. I'm gonna keep a count. Two lives uh, that are directly two. resulted. From and Angel and Manny. And, and Manny. All right. And of course, you could always do the little minor things that go on throughout the movie. People getting shot at and everything that uh, fucks up Manny's life. But let's jump over to Gina. Uh, when we first get introduced to Gina, she tell, she's sitting down at the, at the t- kitchen table telling uh, Tony, you know, I've got a great job. I'm, work- I'm doing hair. I'm also in college. I'm super happy. I'll get my license to do hair in like about a year. And the only thing he says to her at all that is right at, he, after she finishes, he says, I'll tell you what, all that stops today. He's like, you don't need to be working a job like that, you know, for some people. I'll take care of you, pretty much. So she's already on the right path. Like, 100%. She's in school. She's working a great job. She's happy. And boom, as soon as he drops into her life, everything spirals out. Yep. Which is funny, because he's trying to protect her. Mm-hmm. But he, by doing that, he's the one that fucks Draws her, her into it, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, of course... You know, during the club scene later on, she he Tony assaults the boyfriend yep. and slaps the absolute shit out of Gina. Uh, and although he's not obviously directly responsible for it, he pretty much is a hundred percent responsible for her being for her shot, being killed. So that's, that's he all crazy. he all but pulled the trigger on her. Yeah. So no, completely no. It's if it wasn't for him, Gina would still be alive. Absolutely. So he's killed his sister. He's killed his best friend, and he's killed another one of his friends. So that's three lives already. The three big ones. Like, t- yeah. at least two big principal cast members. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's jump over to Omar, who is the... Is he or is he not undercover police informant? I gotta say, I think... I'm guessing he was. I think... So. Yeah, I don't know. The movie never comes out and directly tells you, but we're led to assume that he has switched. Even though he was an undercover cop, uh, Tony's definitely, like... I guess kind of sort of is, has a hand in getting him killed. Because, oh, no, absolutely. Because of how he acts out during Omar the Sosa deal. So that's four deaths. Yeah, we're at four. Uh, Elvira, <laughs> I gotta say, what happens to her at the end? I don't remember. I remember she said she leaves, and that's all we hear from her, right? I th- yeah. Uh, it's pretty much like so when that we, last scene, you don't see her again. Yeah, when Tony gets introduced to Frank, he also gets introduced to... I'm assuming she probably OD'd shortly after. <laughs> you think so? Five. Um, she gets she gets when when Tony gets introduced to Frank, he also gets introduced to Elvira. And although she's not happy <clears throat> excuse me, although she's not happy with Frank, she's definitely far from being abused by Frank. Right, yeah, like she's at not least, happy with him, but she's not like beating the fuck out of At him least anything. how we're led to presume, you know, and he doesn't force himself on her like Tony does. 
Uh, so while she's not in great shape, she's definitely could be in a lot worse shape, yeah. which is, she is with Tony. Yeah, oh yeah. And then of course she leaves him at the end. Uh, of course we'll go. We'll talk about the big one, Frank. Uh, when he makes a deal with Sosa without, oh, yeah, he, he, he makes a deal over, without. He fucks over Frank hard. He fucks over Frank hard financially by making this deal with Sosa without consulting Frank, and then of course tape moving in on Elvira, and then of course shooting him. Yeah. So that's what five now we're at. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's five technically, and well, he does. He's not the one that actually kills Frank. No, but, but he tells Manny to he, do it. Yeah, so he the hit. that also kind of plays into kind of like. Uh, when Walt asked Aaron, uh, Jesse to, to uh, kill, kill Gail. Uh, Gail, yeah. So that's pretty much oh, like the equivalent. Oh, Breaking spoilers, I guess? What? Well, you should have seen it by now. Yeah, you really should have. Um, and of course he or shoots, GTFO. he shoots Mel in the stomach. That's the, the police, uh, the dirty cop. And even though Mel was dirty, you know, still, yeah, so we, we can six. count it. We're up to six directly resulted from, from Tony. Not to mention probably all the people that's been dealt with by his coke uh dealing yeah. so we can put that probably in the hundreds um alberto um who is mark mongolis who is fucking great as always and everything who's also well, breaking bad alumni at six we're at f- six right now mel frank manny angel gina omar oh i forgot about mel yeah uh alberto and even though he deserved to die as well tony did does shoot him in the face so in the fucking face man. we're up to seven uh, and then, although, uh, and well, he gets, he gets Ernie and a lot of his men killed too. Yeah, so we're, that's, it's, we're, it's at le- we're at least past 10 that he's directly resulted in yeah. the deaths of, not to mention, of course, all the people that get caught yeah. in the crossfire. Well, so, and then he, I mean, it all comes back to him at the end though. I mean, and I feel like every bullet is one of the deaths oh, yeah, he's for responsible sure. for. Um, yeah, he gets all fucked up. Um, I mean, everyone knows how the movie ends. Mm-hmm. He does a mountain of fucking cocaine. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, just the big shootout. Well, I got to say, too. Everything comes back on him. Mm-hmm. He gets, obviously, blown away and falls in his fountain with that globe that says yeah, the world is the yours. the world is yours. Well, apparently in the original script, spoilers for the, uh, not the original script, the, the 1932 version, I mean, spoilers for that. Apparently, he gets shot down, I think, in an alleyway okay. in front of a blinking billboard that says the world is yours. Oh, nice. So they kind of brought it all back around. Okay. Uh, which I hope they do for, of course, the Diego Luna version. Which oh, I would I'm also sure, like to I'm see. Sure they get rid of that. I'd also like to see how they spin on it. But yeah, it's just crazy how much this movie has inspired other movies. Like you mentioned, the the gangster films, of course. But then, yeah. of course, probably at least to me, the greatest TV series we've ever had, Breaking Bad. Like, oh yeah, for now, for the big influence on Breaking Bad. Really, it's, it's just crazy how we are we supposed to. When do you think we're supposed to turn on on Tony? I say it's at the Sosa deal. I it's, would no, I agree with that. The Sosa thing is kind of the point when you're like, oh wow, like these, like there's, mm-hmm. there's no going back for him. Yeah, at this point. and it's it's like the most um, argued debate with Breaking Bad as well as Windows like Wall when, Break Bad. Yeah, uh, and that can anybody can make an argument for any one of his decisions pretty much. And here, I think it's mostly, you I mean you could even cut it back to when he agrees to do the Rabanga hit. Yeah, for sure. Or when he chooses to do the Colombian deal and gets losing them their jobs, it's yeah. No, so, no, the defining like you can make an argument for any of them. The defining one for me is the Sosa thing, which I, I was down. I was gonna say this could easily easily be a fucking crazy good TV series, but then we pretty much got it with Breaking Bad, yeah, so there's like no be, need yeah. for it. I agree, but I would love to see like. The relationship, like how we had Jesse and Walt in Breaking Bad, I would love to see that with Manny, Manny and like a redone, Tony. reimagined kind of version of this version of the script. That'd be cool. Uh, of, of the of, really cool. of Scarface, anyway. Yeah, and like how them. You could even use Diego Luna and then somebody else to play Manny. That'd be fucking crazy good, dude. Like, I'm sure like the TV execs are already thinking about it, but fucking probably nothing's Jesus. been established yet. Um, what else do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about this this finale scene? That's all my notes that I really have because, like I said, I didn't want to go beat for, for beat by it, but there's still a lot of great scenes in this movie that we could talk about. Yeah. Um, is there any one that sticks out to you in particular, or any one you don't necessarily like? Not or, off the top of my head, to be honest with you. Like I said, because I, I know you say this, is, this isn't your favorite movie. movie. Like, what are the flaws that you see in it? No, it's not so much. It's not a flaw thing. Like, I still think it's a really, really good fucking movie. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't know. I just, you know. There's it, better movies? In my opinion, yes. Has, so, has someone done this story better to you? Uh, I don't know. Um, As far as, I mean, honestly, I would, 
for the story, I would say Breaking Bad's better than this. But then again, you got to think how much time Breaking Bad yeah, had like to tell the same sixty plus basis, hours yeah, or something like to that tame, to s- tell the same story. Mm-hmm. So I mean, no, I definitely it's definitely a really good movie. Like I said, I'm just not. I just I think the with script like most people are. I think the script is pretty air fucking tight, dude. Oliver Stone it um, is, yeah. wrote this, of course, while he was and on see, a and huge that's the coke. Thing. I'm not a big binge. Oliver Stone. I'm not either for the most part, but this but script this is script airtight, is man. Really fucking good. And I would love to um, read the screenplay. I, I have it. I just haven't read it. I have a copy of it as well, and I've never read it. I need to, um, <laughs> just to just to see how you keep people the, like the audience's attention throughout a three hour movie. Like it's crazy. Especially yeah. something that's not as fantastical as like the Lord of the Rings or something. Or when, something when I sit down to rewatch this, I did not remember it being that fucking long. I remembered it being fairly long, but not as long. Like, I, as I'm watching it again, I try to watch it with clean eyes. I forgot about the hit with uh, the Mark Mangola's character in the car. Yeah. I forgot about that. I forgot about the dinner scene where he and Elvira and Manny are arguing. Mm-hmm. I had kind of forgotten all of that, and then I was like, oh yeah, shit, that's all still got to happen. <laughs> all the shit with Sosa at the end yep. and everything. Dude, that that guy too. The guy that plays uh, Alejandro Sosa is fucking great. I can't remember his yeah, name who though. Who is that? That plays. It's fucking good. He's charming as shit too, man. Um, Paul Sh- Paul Shinar? Is he famous for anything else? I will tell you in a second. I bet there's people that are listening to this that are just screaming at us like, "Yeah, you idiots!" He's famous for blank. Fucking probably. Um, because we're wow, so young. Actually, no, not really. No. The last movie he was credited in was in 1988. Did he pass away, or did he just stop acting? I will tell you in a second. Yeah, he died. Uh, oh, wow, well, the year I was born. Well, there you go. Eighty nine. Um. Yeah, I don't recognize anything else he was in, to be honest. But he's really fucking good in this. So. Absolutely. Um. Yeah, dude. That shootout scene at the end is so. God damn it's so well fucking cut and directed. It's, uh, man. Um. Is there any scene else, anything else you want to talk about? Any other scenes or anything? I mean, we can talk a little bit. I mean, there's a bunch of, like, behind-the-scenes shit with this movie that's... I do know that during that final insane. shootout that uh, Al Pacino burnt, got third-degree burns for holding the grenade barrel. Yeah, that... That's insane. Would fucking suck. That's crazy. Um, do you think... Like, I was actually reading ow. on this. I was reading up on this uh, earlier. Do you think that this movie is intentionally, uh, sh- I guess, schlocky? What do you mean? Well, a lot of people I noticed that were rewatch this movie think that it's like this movie is exaggerated, almost like how you have like Tarantino's glorified violence that's like an over exaggeration, yeah. is oversaturated and everything. Do you think this movie is intentionally like that? Because I don't. I still think no, m- not at all. Most of the movie I think is pretty close to the chest on no, like I no, I don't really think it's like that at all. There are moments like. Where things seem to get a little almost too fantastical, like the chainsaw scene. The one thing where it's a little too much is when he puts his face in the mountain of cocaine at the end. Mm-hmm. It's like, dude, um, no, you're that's, fucking but, dead. That tr- that's true, but that's also supposed to build towards the finale where he's taking all those bullets and still standing. That's the yeah, in-universe yeah. explanation of how he's able to still stand through all that. But, um, uh, something I thought was interesting. Uh, do you know who Al Pacino's biggest or like one of his main influences for his portrayal yes. was uh, Meryl Streep Meryl Streep and, and Sophie's Choice yes <laughs> crazy I don't that's fucking that's awesome that's that's crazy dude um I guess we can jump on over real quick to the trivia section uh the only thing I have to, to talk about just because again I like to find trivia that really directly results in the movie itself like the ending especially and something you already mentioned uh when Brian De Palma submitted it to the the MPAA they, of course, gave it an X rating. Uh, he made some cuts, resubmitted, got another X rating, resubmitted a third time, got another another X rating, and he was like, he refused to cut any further. He's like, I'm not going to, I need an R rating or else that's it. Um, and basically, like you said, they brought in real narcotics officers and they all testified saying this is exactly what it's like on the streets. Like, pr- like it's not like fantastical or, or hyped up for a movie. This is what it's like, especially in the 80s. Um, so De Palma was like, you know what? My first cut of the movie was good enough for an R rating. I'm going to resubmit it. And they got approved. And it wasn't until after the movie came out that De Palma was like, yeah, that was my first cut of it. No cuts. So that's fucking hilarious. That's insane. Like he just slid that. He just slid that fucking cut in there. Like (laughs) that's a ballsy fucking move. Like you could never get away with that today. 
yeah in absolutely. the fucking industry. Like, there's no fucking chance. And I don't think this movie really needs an X rating. There's not. There's like maybe one or two flashes of nudity. There's violence, obviously, I, I, but there's nothing no, unheard I don't of. Think, I don't think this. We're also an we're also going off of today's standards versus yeah, 80s well, standards. I'm sure in the 80s it was probably fucking crazy, but like, yeah, I wouldn't give this an X rating by any fucking means. No fucking way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, I want to go ahead and jump in. Yeah, to the big, the big question. Mm-hmm. Where's the silver lining in all this? Uh, I have one, but I want to hear what yours is first to make sure I don't step on it because um, I tend to step on your toes. Yeah, I struggled hard with this one, like trying to think, like going through each character, like okay. Manny, well, no, clearly not Manny. Manny's mm-hmm. dead as fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, like, just going through each character and, like, I, sh- I struggled to find one. Like, Gina's not going to be okay. Her fucking husband's dead. <laughs> or, wait, fucking, no, Gina's She's dead. Killed. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Elvira. Mm-hmm. She's, like, fucking horrendously addicted to cocaine. Mm-hmm. He's fucking dead. Like, I don't think she ends up okay at all. Mm-hmm. Like, no, I don't think anyone got out of this movie fucking scot-free. No, no, by not any at all. Means. The one fucking thing I can think of mm-hmm. is that the f- there's a big open spot at the head of this fucking cocaine industry for <laughs> someone to step in. Okay. That's all I got. That's all I fucking got. I'm, I was actually looking at it from the other point of view. Um, I was looking at it as justice has been served whether it's vigilante justice or justice in general but yeah you know where are the fucking cops in this movie (laughs) well they're They're, dirty uh, oh fucking apparently there are no police in this fucking movie that was the thing was i was gonna say you know the all the the people involved with sosa that were they were uh that the man that was coming after him the guy giving the testimony well now that they tony failed and they turned on him that's one less drug dealer in the world but not only that sosa and his crew are going down hard for sure oh yeah um so pretty much their justice is served i also add that elvira does get out um you know whether she i don't think i don't think she well i'm saying she gets out of all of this and still lives she might yeah yeah again if this movie had gone on like 10 minutes longer i think she would have been fucked up absolutely um but yeah i think in the end uh, it's only in a post credits i heard just getting (laughs) shot in the head or something i was gonna say in in the end i feel like it's the whole the whole silver lining is what the movie is trying to tell you is that crime doesn't pay that's pretty much it oh i mean it does for a little while it does for a this movie takes place in less than three years fucking riddled with fuck yeah god it does it takes place i think it starts in may of 1980 and ends in february of 83 jesus less than three years uh which i think breaking bad does too i think it only lasts two years yeah, Breaking Bad doesn't last very long at all. But yeah, that's my silver lining is that everyone got what they deserved pretty much. Uh, Gina maybe got caught up in the middle of everything, but to be fair, Tony did warn her. Uh, yeah, but he's the one that fucking dragged her in the first you're place. You're right, you're right. Gina deserved to live. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Uh, yeah, dude, that's that's my silver lining. Everyone yeah, that... It's a- <laughs> Justice comes back it's around. A, it's a dark fucking ending. It is a dark fucking ending, and it's hard to find a silver lining to that, but... You also have to take yourself out of the context of of basically following along and thinking what Tony just is doing is cool and like justified and look at it from the wider perspective, I think, to get yeah. a silver lining for us. So that is wow. 1983 Scarface, directed by Brian De Palma. Thank you for listening, everyone. Please. Uh, actually, before we get into that, what is your movie alternative? Because we just mentioned Scarface got a pretty dark ending. Yeah. Um, everyone going- dies. I'm going for another, like I said, as much as I'm not a huge fan of Oliver Stone, I do like this movie. I'm going Born on the Fourth of July. <laughs> All right. Tom Cruise? Yeah. All right. Uh, um, any particular reason? I mean, not everyone dies in that movie. <laughs> All right. You uh, took the fucking good one. Did I? Yes. <laughs> that's just the first one I thought of. I know. That's the first one I thought of. Then I saw that you fucking had it. So I was like, well, shit. Sorry. Well, I'm going to go with another Al Pacino movie where he's not as despicable. And I mean, he's... Ch- he chews the fuck out of the scenery. God, though. he does. And it's it's like post, quote unquote, good Pacino. Like, yeah. where he starts losing his shit. And I'm going with Ocean's 13, which... 
maybe is the lesser of the ocean movies, but it's still I think it's I still fucking like great. It, though. It's one of my it's one of my favorite out yeah. of the three for sure. Uh, like compared to the other two, like it's a little smaller, a little mm-hmm. more contained story, but like it's more it's fun like to a, me. Almost, almost kind of like a revenge story, but it mm-hmm. is a ton of fun absolutely so that's what i'm going with and he, he again he gets to have fun in that movie too yeah uh and without being like of course soda burst directed him to not be the pacino we know now from right like, like hey you know Lee you and jack do and jill thing? don't do that <laughs> his hoo stuff he's yeah. not none of that really holy shit so thank you for listening oh everyone. my god we should have done the finale episode just on al pacino's career <laughs> <laughs> thank you for listening everyone please subscribe on lawyers, itunes Please leave a rating and some feedback. We'd really appreciate it. You can also go over to facebook.com slash playlist and drop us a message and give us a suggestion for a movie you think we should review in season two. Yeah, you won't be uh, hearing from us for a while. Not for a little while. Not until we get a setup going on between the West and East Coast and we can get some scheduling and some some technical aspects worked out. As we'll, we'll figure as out some, the logistics. As well as some features we may want to bring to the yeah. show. Who, Just, season two... Very well could be me sitting in a room, talking to a cardboard cut out of Dustin, mm-hmm. doing my best Just impression Just using of sound him. bites. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they did it with Tupac. Yeah. They did a whole movie about that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Dude, you could be like the Tupac of podcasts. Silver Linings Resurrection? Fuck. <laughs> So there is obviously no clue for next week, So, but uh, this is season one's finale. Thank you for listening. If you've listened to us this far, we really appreciate it. Please... Don't hesitate to leave us some feedback or to give us some suggestions. We have, of course, a list of movies we're still going down, uh, but we'd be more than happy to throw yours in. And, of course, if we see any movie between now and then that's oh, got yeah. it down or anything, there's, we'll... There's a few coming out that I think we're going to have to touch on. For sure. Uh, we will reconvene uh, in a couple weeks, maybe a couple months. It really depends on uh, how long yeah. it takes. Depends on the schedules. Schedules, because you got a really busy school schedule. I'm going to be, of course, setting up a new life on the West Coast. So. Yep. Then we also have time differences. It's gonna be yeah. What is it? Three three, three hours, hours? I think. So yeah. if it's like if it's four o'clock here, it's one one there over or there. Some shit. Yeah, okay. we'll figure it out though. Yeah. Um. Hopefully. But until then, please enjoy all our previous this episodes. Could end up being a fucking series finale. <laughs> shit. <laughs> enjoy all our previous episodes and watch movies that have fucked up endings for sure. Why? Get out of the get out of the box, man. Before we go. Because we talked about this in the very first episode. Okay. How has it been watching a fucking downer oh, ass yeah. movie every, every week? week since what? We've what? Since like fucking what? August? September? How long have we been uh, doing this? September? It's It's been a while that we've, we've done been doing 26 this. 26 episodes. We took like three weeks off for Christmas. Yeah, man. We've almost done half. We've done half a year's worth of podcasts. So how does it feel having watched like a... God. Like we don't do depressing movies every week, but like we do downer get... fucking endings for the most yeah, part. Yeah, endings that don't leave you feeling too great, honestly. Um, I I you know doing doing this step, I feel like the past couple episodes, I've kind of had to like for not necessarily force myself to watch them because I enjoy most of the movies we do, but force myself to just put myself in the mindset of okay, what is positive about this? What what? Yeah. It's hard, man, and it it's, gets harder every week. I think, like, For sure, I'm definitely gonna enjoy this break just to be able to like. I'm gonna watch <sighs> so many like fucking pix. No, Pick I'm gonna watch <laughs> so many like fucking Pixar movies and shit. Dude, I watched the Lego movie. I'm gonna watch right after happy stuff. I watched the Lego movie right after this one. I was yeah. like, I gotta fucking cheer myself up. <laughs> uh, I didn't watch anything after this because it was this morning. It definitely, definitely, yeah. Um, just knowing we have like, man, we gotta record in two days. I gotta watch this movie. I put it yeah. off. I really do. Like, I put off watching the movie as long as I can just because... Oh, Sam, I think the past few months I've watched the movie literally the morning before we record. Yeah. Which is usually good because it's super fresh, but yeah. I'm also in, like, fucking static shock half the episode. It just drained you, dude, emotionally and physically. Like, I feel exhausted after watching some of these movies. Like, I think I think it was the episode we did on Elephant. I literally finished the movie as you were walking in. Yeah. And just spent half the episode just sitting in silence, <laughs> fucking in shock of what I had just seen. Yeah. And Same with fucking Dog Pound. Jesus. Yeah, Dog Pound's a heavy one for sure. Um, Fuck yeah. that movie. It's definitely, like I said, it's interesting to see what it does to your psyche. Like, it'd be interesting to see the opposite of this, like watching nothing but, you know, fairytale endings and trying to find the bad in them, which is obviously, would, I think, would be way more comical. 
Like we're actually trying to do a good service here versus the other way around. But it's just, yeah, man, it's, it definitely makes you look at, at movies differently. Like having to like sit there, take notes and follow, you know, themes that you normally wouldn't see under the, on the surface and just having to force yourself to be like, we got to have an answer. What is good about this ending? And some, yeah. it's, we do stretch sometimes reaching and we reach hard, but I mean, I think we've so far, we've been able to at least get a little, at least say, yeah, we found something. Um, It'd be interesting to find one that we where we just don't. Um, which, We've come very close. At least I've come very close. There's yeah. been a few where I've been fucking stumped. I mean, there's been some where we've had to do it in the middle of the episode. Had to figure out what it is because yep. we couldn't think of anything for a week. So it's Good gonna Lord. be it's gonna be interesting going into season two. We'll have a clean slate, a fresh palette, and be able to like and dive back big in. Big ass list of movies. Got a lot of movies. And, of course, the list is ever-growing. Of course. But until then, until season two, again, thank you for listening, everyone. And if you've listened this far, we really appreciate uh, you being a fan. Feel free to show other people our show. Get them interested. Uh, again, like us on Facebook. Subscribe on Say iTunes. There's a fucking, like, 26 backlogged episodes for you to catch up on before season two. Mm-hmm. And, like Woo! I said, do not hesitate to drop us a suggestion. We would love to take your suggestions. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Man. I, I can't, that's, like I said, I'm drained. I'm yeah. going to be very happy to take this break. <laughs> well, until season two. Oh, until an indiscriminate amount of time. An indiscriminate amount of time. As always, Excelsior. Excelsior.